Kicking off the list at number 10, the creation of Adam. We'll start this list off with one of the most famous paintings of sculptor and artist, Michelangelo. The creation of Adam. You've seen it at one point or another, or you've seen it referenced at one point or another. It was painted back in 1508. The poster of E.T. was inspired by this painting. With little hands, little oh, phone home. Memes have been on a whole new level thanks to Michelangelo and this piece. But what's the dark background here exactly? Perhaps the plethora of naked folks in the sky all bunched up together? Not exactly. It was known that back in the 1500s, Michelangelo used to dissect bodies, all in the name of art. Of course, why not? He would create anatomic artwork, that's why his creation of Adam kind of looks like he's crawling out of an organ. To be honest, I never noticed it at first, now, I can't unsee it. That's definitely the inside of a body. The Sistine Chapel has many dark pieces of art. I may or may not mention another. Number nine, Hidden Beached Whale. Look closely at this 1641 landscape from Henrik van and Thonnesen. This masterpiece here is titled View of Skeveningen Sands. Yeah, it's a nice one. It's pretty cold of a day. I wouldn't go to the beach personally. Do you notice anything out of the ordinary in this painting? Anything at all catching your eye? What's everyone looking at here, you know? Art is so mysterious. So many questions in this one painting. I just, I feel like we're missing something here, you know? Like just something in this painting. What about now? Yeah, there was a beached whale in that painting the entire time and we didn't know until 2014. How amazing is that? At some point after it had been completed, the work of art was painted over. So for hundreds of years, somebody was looking at this wondering what the meaning was. He's like, why are they all on the beach? What are they looking at? It was a beached whale this whole time. It was haunting the entire time to look at. Someone didn't like that. You know what, rightfully so. I would have painted over that whale too. No, I wouldn't have, that's a fabulous painting. I would have never touched that. Number eight, David and Goliath. We of course have to look at some of the artwork of the Sistine Chapel that's loaded with history fun history, some would say. A panel that shows David and Goliath specifically, or rather it shows David about to defeat the Goliath. Michelangelo added a hidden message in this one painting. The stance that David is making looks heroic. He's got, you know, athletic stance for sure to, you know, do some bad stuff right away. But his stance is in the shape of a Hebrew letter, the letter Gimel, which refers to reward and punishment. Good thing it wasn't Resh or else he wouldn't have won the battle. His arm would be all the way over here. He'd be like that. Wouldn't have won at all. These are like Easter eggs in famous paintings. So far, I'm loving this. And if you're enjoying the content as well, hit that thumbs up. Let us know, then we can do more art for you. Let's move on. Number seven, hidden self-portrait. In George Surratt's painting of a woman powdering herself, there's a window in the top left corner. And me, personally, I would have gone with, you know, the sun. But George here, at first, he went with a self-portrait. A little selfie. This was odd behavior though, historically, for this artist because he wasn't known for painting self-portraits, ever. This was the only time it happened. Thanks to the Courtauld Gallery in London and a few x-rays, now we can make out the first draft of this 19th century painting. The portrait does resemble a photo of George as well. We compared them both, so we're definitely able to confirm that's him. He did at least one self-portrait. That's pretty historical. I'm, I'm glad we found it. X-rays were actually done back in 1958 and 1987, but the machine could only detect a layer of paint, not the actual image, if there was one. Pointillism is so impressive. I tried it one summer and was absolute garbage. Number six, Garden of Earthly Delights. This piece was done back in the late 15th century. Painter Hieronymus Bosch had a lot going on in this one, that's for sure. There's a group of naked people eating a big strawberry. There's a mermaid riding a fish. This one's got a lot of wacky stuff on it. We love it. In 2014, a hidden message was found on somebody's butt. Yeah, I'm not joking. There's actual like music notes drawn across somebody's bottom. Uh, so a college student translated it and now you can listen to it. You can listen to that guy's butt. That little melody Bosch was humming to himself while he was painting sounded like this. Yeah, well, it's not gonna be stuck in our heads anytime soon, but it's still fun to hear art come to life, you know? Number five, a starry night. We had Van Gogh in part one, Cafe Terrace at night, so naturally, we have to throw him in part two as well. The only time we've seen Vincent Van Gogh as a time traveler was in Doctor Who, but how did Vincent Van Gogh know about turbulent flow decades before scientists even knew about it? Yeah, that's the question we're trying to answer here on MA10. The Starry Night was painted back in 1889, but in 2004, NASA observed a distant star where dust and gas were swirling around the cosmos. It reminded NASA of Van Gogh's work, so they looked into his art a bit more, and mathematically, his artwork mirrors natural turbulence. This was also at a time where Van Gogh's mental health was not A-OK, -okay, so how he was able to get the math is accurate that long ago, and also via art, is mind-blowing. Number four, Bacchus. 
Michelangelo Caravaggio, okay. His 1595 painting, Bacchus, looks pretty calm at first. The god of wine and being a tipsy, a personal favorite god of mine, if I may. It's currently in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, and it wasn't until 2009 where, you guessed it, they found a hidden image. In the carob of wine on the bottom left of the painting, there is a self-portrait of Caravaggio. We can't see it with our eyes, but technology, once again, has our back here. There's a tiny little head reflected on the wine jug. Maybe, it just looks like a smudge at first, but with the help of radio diagnostic investigation, we can see the bigger slash smaller picture. We can see a man with his arms stretched out, the world's smallest selfie for the win. Number three, The Last Supper. We've all seen this one at some point, I'm confident. If you haven't, Look at this, isn't that amazing? I'm glad I was able to show you this. The Last Supper, painted by Leonardo da Vinci in the late 15th century, has been the talk of many towns. In this painting, we see John the Apostle, and it's been debated that it's actually Mary in disguise. I know, don't tell anyone. And that V-shape in between Jesus and John represents the female womb. That was in Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code. I didn't make that up. If I made that up, I wouldn't be here. That's crazy. But another secret could be lying in plain view this whole time right on the table. In 2007, an Italian musician found hidden musical notes in this painting. Musical notes hiding in bread rolls and in the hand of the apostles. We have two musical messages in this video, that's crazy. This makes me wanna look for more clues in paintings. Let me just go look at some butts on art for a bit. Any notes on butts? What does that one say, it's an E minor? No. I'm gonna start looking at more musical notes on butts of all the paintings. I'm gonna try and find one. That one's kind of an E flat, you know? E flat. That's how we do it. Number two, the separation of light from darkness. This one's another anatomical one. Makes me feel weird. Once I saw it, I couldn't unsee it. I'm not gonna lie to you. The separation of light from darkness, Michelangelo again. Michelangelo was featured on part one, the creation of Adam. It's definitely an iconic piece. But once you see the hidden organs in that painting, it changes you for a bit, you know? This one as well, another iconic piece from Michelangelo seen in the Sistine Chapel. We have the central figure, God, surrounded by four others. What we often miss though, is the spinal cord that runs up God's chest. It's like one of those hidden object books, only the art is beautiful and the objects are gross. I'm like, oh, it's a spinal cord. That's found it. And finally, number one, the lady in the grass. We'll end this part two on another piece by Van Gogh. Patch of Grass was a Van Gogh classic done in 1887, and upon first glance, the painting appears to be, well, nothing more than just that, a patch of grass. But it's beautiful and it's art, so naturally we'll look at it for too long. Oh, it's just a wall? That's not art. I thought it was the grass. That's just the wall. This one doesn't contain any deep space mathematics by any means, but in 2008, Dutch researchers used an x-ray, took a deeper look into the grass, and found the portrait of a woman. How haunting is that of a discovery? Imagine being the first person to find that. That's really scary. That's a horror movie. Around one third of Van Gogh's artwork has old paintings underneath it. He would often paint over his stuff. We're only recently finding them, which is exciting. Scientist George Deke of the Delft University of Technology, he's literally peeling back layers of paint history digitally. The painting right now hangs in the Dutch eastern city, Aturlo, in the Kroller Mueller Museum. So next time you take a look at this masterpiece, just know that there's a woman's face looking back at you. And while you're watching this video, just know I'm actually looking back at you right now too. Isn't that creepy? Art, digital art, still art. Starting off this countdown, we have the Barrier Cannon Pictographs. Located in the southwest, the Barrier Cannon is a remote area in Utah. There you will find amazing pictographs that date back to thousands of years ago. Here's the thing, people are like, bro, those pictures look an awful lot like aliens. Most of the figures displayed there are quite odd. They are around 8 feet tall and shaped like a human, but have no arms, legs, ears, or noses. They do, however, have big alien-like eyes. Some have been drawn with free-floating eyes, or wings, or with serpents around their hands or above their heads. Other paintings are of animals and humans, but the humans aren't drawn nearly as big as the 8 foot tall weird creatures. The paintings are said to have been done by mixing blood and clay and possibly urine as a binder. Upon analyzing them, they found hair from a paintbrush that dates back to 6750 BCE, meaning maybe people back then were in contact with these humanoid alien type creatures. I mean, they would have have had to had a big impact on their life in order for them to have been painted. Number nine, Bill Clinton. We've all heard that clip downloading music growing up, you know. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Like, bro, I'm trying to listen to Christmas music. What is this? Whose voice is this? What did I download? Why is this computer not working anymore? I'm so grounded. Back in 2006, former US President Bill Clinton showed off 
this beautiful portrait of himself done by the incredible artist John Nelson Shanks. As far as portraits go, this is beautiful. The art is beautiful and all that. But that pose, I mean, I don't know. Something's, something's off about it. His stance is like... Let me redo it. He just looks uncomfortable, you know? He doesn't look ready yet. Well, that's because the shadow on the left side of the portrait, it's meant to represent Monica Lewinsky. I'm not even lying to you. I knew it. I felt like there was some darkness in here. I'm like, oh, something's off here. There's some shady history around. Pun intended. The artist himself admitted that this was indeed the case. He used the dress shape as symbolism to the scandal while he was creating the artwork. I thought the dark background here was Bill's pants, but... Well, I was wrong, that's why we're here. We like to educate. Number eight, the Madonna with Saint Giovanni. For this next one, we'll be taking a look at a painting from the 15th century by artist Domenico Ghirlandio. This painting is currently in the Hall of Hercules in Palazzo Vecchio in Florence. Also, if I'm saying any of these names wrong, you can tell me, I'm, it's probably gonna be a lot of them. I'm trying. The painting shows the Virgin Mary, infant Jesus, of course, with a six pack, for some reason. And over her right shoulder, we can see this object floating in the sky. Let's take a closer look at that, shall we? What is that? Is that a drone? A magnetic balloon? A, a weather balloon? Those weren't around then. What's even more interesting is that a man is looking up at the sky at this object. He's even covering his eyes, shielding the sun to try and get a better look. Man's going blind to try and see what's hovering above him. It's always a good sign as well when your dog is barking at something next to you in the sky. Art historians believe that the object is an angel, an angel resembling a cloud, while others believe that it's a clear sign of alien visitors. I'm others. I'm like, oh, E.T., the whole thing. I'm, this is starting to make more sense now. What do you guys think? Was this the 15th century version of drawing the sun at the top corner of your painting? Or did this mystery artist just document UFO footage with his own brush? Number seven, Cafe Terrace at Night. Upon first glance, you can tell this is a piece done by the fabulous Vincent Van Gogh. The blue tones, the streaks. I did the Van Gogh experience downtown Toronto and it was mesmerizing, honestly. The floor is moving, I was like, falling into the walls and everything, it was great. While his 1888 oil painting, Cafe Terrace at Night, looks like a quiet late night summer dream, it's actually pretty dark when you start looking closely. I'm not a Van Gogh expert by any means, but Jared Baxter, he is. Back in 2015, Jared brought forth this idea that Cafe Terrace at Night was really Van Gogh's version of The Last Supper. This figure in the center with long hair and 12 surrounding individuals, one of which is slipping into darkness, yeah, it checks out. He also says there are hidden crucifixes in this painting. I knew there was something spiritual about that Van Gogh exhibit. I knew it all around me. I'm like, is that a floating crucifix? Where'd it go? It's gone. Number six, Medusa. Another one of the most recent paintings on today's list is Medusa by Caravaggio. It was done back in 1597. Crazy that that's a recent painting. That's so long ago in my head. And this photo, I'll admit right off the bat, is a little bit haunting. It's, yeah, it's a little gory, it's a little graphic. But where does this idea come from? What compels a person to spend this long on a scary painting? The entire time I'd be like, we all know the story of Medusa, the woman with, you know, snakes for hair. When you look at them, you turn to stone and then you're stuck forever and it's horrible. Well, this is a painting that really captures her, her essence, her beauty, you know, really just uh, her complexion is so nice, her snake complexion. The snakes really add to the moment, you know, without taking away. The blood oozing out of her neck also draws the eye. It's a nice... Oh, it's a nice accent. This painting was meant to be a depiction of the defeat of Medusa, obviously. The legend goes that Perseus, who is the son of Zeus and Danae, was given a shield by Athena. He took said shield to battle Medusa and he managed to outsmart her by letting her catch a glimpse of her own reflection in that shield. Bam, you played yourself. Yeah, she turned herself into stone and then this is when he took his sword out and you know, you can probably feel the rest of it. You've seen Game of Thrones. A happy moment, perhaps. I don't know. Imagine having this in your home. I wouldn't sleep. That's terrifying to look at. Number five, the Mona Lisa. No way she's on this list. What is she up to? How can the Mona Lisa possibly be on this dark messages list? She's literally just... She's chilling out, she's so calm. Another masterpiece from Da Vinci, coming from the 15th century. There's already been, of course, hundreds of theories surrounding this painting. Like perhaps she could have been pregnant, given her stance with the, you know, the hands doing the thing. And the veil over her shoulders, those were worn often by pregnant women during the Italian Renaissance. But back in 2011, a clue was found in the painting. Yeah, a clue, like we're national treasure all of a sudden. Silvano Vincetti supposedly found letters and numbers painted into 
her eyes. Teeny tiny microscopic numbers and letters. How fun is that? Yeah, I was at my desk earlier and my forehead was like touching my computer screen. I was like, really? Are you sure? I was looking, couldn't find anything. My eyes aren't that great. The L over her right eye stands for Leonardo and in the other eye there's a 72, the number 7 and 2. We believe so far this relates to Christianity and Judaism. 7, the creation of the world, and 2, the duality of men and women. Meanwhile, I'm over here drawing that really cool S. I think I nailed that, I'm not gonna lie. Number four, The Ambassadors. This one got me, I'm not gonna lie, I got the creeps after this. The Ambassadors is a painting from 1533. I've seen this one before, as I'm sure you have at one point or another. Hans Hobbian the Youngers painted this lovely room with, you know, scholars, there's a globe, a mandolin, you know, to pass the time, help inspiration, as we all, that's why we get mandolins. We have one in the corner here at the studio. Chris whips it, often. But at the bottom, we see an anamorphic skull. It makes you want to cock your head around almost. It doesn't seem to fit in properly. Like the angle of the skull is wrong. It looks like whenever I try and use Photoshop, it's just something's off. Experts believe this was done intentionally to remind us that death is around the corner. So when I was looking at this, I was like, why is that doing that? And I'm like, oh, death is around the haunting. Next, number three, the old guitarist. Any fans of Game of Thrones on here? Well, this next one gives off major White Walker vibes. The old guitarist is, well, exactly what you think. It's an old man, hunched over, white hair, playing a guitar. This would be creepy regardless, just on its own. But when Pablo Picasso was putting together this masterpiece back in the early 1900s, he had some tricks up his sleeve. At the end of the 1900s, in 1998, researchers used infrared on the painting. Again, national treasure style for some reason. And this time, it wasn't a hidden message, it was a hidden woman. Yeah, another woman was painted underneath the elderly man. So because this paint is naturally fading now, she's becoming more and more clear to see. That is so deep. That's the most deep thing. Am I into art? Am I enjoying art? Am I researching? This is fun. I like this. Number two, Netherlandish proverbs. Back in 1559, Peter Bruegel the Elder, great name, created this oil painting and we're still trying to unravel everything in here. And this painting, I mean, for one, it's massive. There's a lot going on. It's on display currently in the Gamal the Gallery in Berlin. It's got a lot going on. And when you really start to focus, you can see some weird going on in this painting. What is that guy doing? That guy's banging his head off the wall. Walter White's been throwing pizzas on the roof for some reason. That fish ate a bigger fish. This dude fell off an ox onto a donkey. What kind of heist was going on in this town? What is happening? Ah, uh, I see. It's supposed to be horrible. Lovely. Proverbs were a hot topic back in the 1500s. Apparently, over 100 Dutch proverbs and idioms are seen in this painting. He also aimed to illustrate the stupidity of man, and given how much of a shit show this town looks like, I'd say Peter nailed it. And finally, number one, the Arnolfini portrait. This one is the most impressive paintings on our list. I am a sucker for reflections. And for this one, we'll be looking at Jan van Eck's painting from 1434. It's quite old, the oldest on our list. This is an oil painting titled the Arnolfini Portrait. It shows Giovanni de Nicolaio Arnolfini, his wife, and a little doggo. In the background, that's where things get mysterious. There's a mirror, a painted mirror. It's been widely believed that Jan is in the painting themselves. We love an artist cameo, nice. I'm actually in that wall too. Believe it or not, you just can't see me yet. It hasn't been long enough. Also, written in Latin above the mirror, there's a message. A Latin message. Let's do it. The message reads, Jan van Eck was here. 1434. That's got to be the oldest blank was here of all time. Even older than Brooks was here from Shawshank Redemption. That was pretty old. A message like that with the artist hidden in the painting, that gives me goosebumps all around. And I'm not really entirely sure why. Number 10, Madam X. We'll kick off this part two with a scandalous painting. Oh my, yes, shield your eyes, young ones. We got spaghetti straps coming in hot. This painting was deemed too scandalous back in the day. Madame X, the portrait of Virginie Amélie Avigno Gertreau, originally painted back in 1884 by John Singer Sargent. Now at first, John made the woman's straps sliding off her shoulder, a little, you know, a little, ooh, my lovely jewel strap is, ooh, slipped off, ooh. Apparently that was too scandalous for the upper class society around him back then, so John had to repaint the straps back on. Yeah, backlash was still so strong after John had sold the painting that he moved. The guy left Paris because of spaghetti straps. Are you kidding? What have we done? Art, he's so good, and we pushed him away. Come paint me like one of your fine French gals. Paint all the straps on me, I don't care. On or off, what's up, let's party. Moving on 
at number 9 we have the rock paintings. For years archaeologists in Sharma, India have been baffled by these weird ancient rock paintings. The paintings are around 10,000 years old and they look like they depict aliens and UFOs. Archaeologist Junior Back said and I quote, the findings suggest that humans in prehistoric times may have seen or imagined beings from other planets. Some of the paintings show these weird alien shaped figures with massive heads, whereas other drawings are of what appears to be UFO spaceships. In other pictures, these weird humanoid figures are wearing what appears to be spacesuits. In fact, locals in the village would worship the paintings and tell great stories about small people coming down from the sky in round shaped flying objects, abducting people, and then never returning. So, were the prehistoric people just super creative, or were they actually greeted by these aliens? Moving on to number 8 we have Saint Wolfgang and the Devil. This painting was created in the 15th century by famous German renaissance painter Michael Patcher. It was painted based on the legend about Saint Wolfgang tricking the devil into building a church. So yes, that green guy with the weird face on his ass is supposed to be the devil. But people are like, uh really? That's an alien. I mean yes, I admit that this creature doesn't look like a traditional devil, but over the years the devil has been depicted in a number of different forms, including something like this. But no, no no, a number of people strongly believe that it's not the devil he was in contact with, but it was aliens instead, and apparently aliens have faces on their bums. Moving on to number 7 we have the crucifixion of Jesus. Okay, this one is wild, buckle your seatbelt. So take a look at this painting from 1350. It was created by an unknown artist for the Decani Monastery. The artist signed his name Serge, but there's no historical records of anyone with such name. So right off the bat, people are like, okay, so who created this piece? Especially because in the top right and left hand corners of the piece, there are two UFOs with passengers inside. In the right corner, the pilot in the UFO seems to be looking all the way back at the craft behind him. Now, I don't know about you, but no normal human being can do that with their neck unless they're an alien or an owl. On top of it all, this work would have had to been approved on the detail or else the whole piece would have been repainted. So someone saw this and was like, yep, that's accurate, looks good, meaning aliens were present during Jesus' crucifixion? Also, they didn't have spacecrafts back then, or any flying things, but those two people are certainly flying in something alright, so what's the deal? Well one explanation is that those two UFO things are supposed to represent the sun and the moon, or two divine beings watching over, but a lot of people are just like no, they're aliens. In our sixth spot today we have the Madonna. Painted in the late 1400s, this is a beautiful painting of the Madonna with infant Jesus and Saint John. But if you look in the background, there appears to be a weird spacecraft floating in the sky. In fact, it is emitting beams of light and the man in the back with the dog is looking up at it with his mouth open like what the heck is this? Like he's in awe of it. Even the dog is looking up at it like what the hell is going on here? This craft looks a lot like a UFO. I mean come on, there's even light rays coming out of it, so what else could it be? Again, people argue saying that maybe it's an angel or some sort of holy entity looking down on her. But there's no wings or a body of an angel and this wasn't the typical way to portray angels, so it seems quite odd and out of place to say the least. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Leonardo da Vinci's paintings. A lot of people think that Leonardo da Vinci was in contact with aliens and was trying to tell us through hiding secret messages in his paintings. First off, people thought that Leo was way ahead of his time, like he was drawing pictures of helicopters in 1493 before it was even a thing. He also talked about ships that could travel underwater, submarines, like he came up with a lot of modern day inventions somehow back then. So people were like, okay, he's either a time traveler or an alien or he's in contact with aliens and they were telling him how to advance society. Now here comes the freaky part. Someone mirrored and lightened his painting of Saint John the Baptist and it appears as if there's an alien face in there. It is truly quite freaky. It straight up looks like an alien from the predator or something. Then you have his famous work of art, the Mona Lisa. Turns out if you do the exact same thing to this painting you also see an alien's face. So what do you think? Was Leo subtly trying to tell us something? 
If so, why would he make it so hard for us to find? Also, I want to know who went around like mirroring and lightening these images. Like, were they purposely looking for a coded message? Should we be doing that to all paintings or what? Moving on to number four, we have the glorification of the Eucharist. This is another religious painting that might include signs of alien life. So in this painting from the 17th century, we see God and Jesus looking out over God's kingdom. But what's weird is that there is this weird round object between the two with antennas sticking out of it. It looks a lot like Russia's Sputnik satellite. Now, the sphere is the creation globe, like to represent Earth and the cosmos. But people argue that if that was so, then how come there's no stars? And how come it looks like it has almost a metallic reflection? And what about the antennas, okay? Some say that it's magic wands, but it can't be because they look like they retract, like antennas. I don't know about this one, okay? There's two theories. One, aliens provided them with such a device, or two, someone is a time traveler. I don't even know anymore. Coming in at number three, we have Um No Chiri. This illustration is part of a UFO legend from the 1800s. The fact that back then they had stories talking about spacecrafts and extraterrestrials makes it seem like aliens are indeed real. This Japanese story talked about a sailor finding a weird floating craft in the ocean which is what this picture depicts. According to the story, the craft was an object made from steel and glass and was big enough to fit a small human inside. On top of that, they said inside of the craft was a small script that they couldn't decipher. Probably because it was like in an alien language, I don't know. But anyways, what are the odds that this story perfectly describes UFOs and drew them just like we picture them nowadays? In our second spot, we have the Paleolithic rock painting. This for sure is a painting of a UFO spaceship and no one can tell me differently. Like there's no way this isn't. Like come on, as a kid, that's how I drew UFOs. What else is it meant to be if it's not an alien spacecraft, hmm? Anyways, this painting was found deep inside of a cave in Neo France. It's dated back to 13,000 BC, which is insane because obviously they didn't have any flying devices back then, so what is this a picture of? Maybe they really did come across a UFO. And in our number one spot today, we have Dracula's UFO. Not gonna lie, this is another really freaking weird one. This is a 16th century painting of Dracula's castle, like the real life Dracula, aka Vlad the Impaler. While hovering right above the castle in the sky is what looks like a UFO spacecraft. Not only that, but in 2014, a tourist photographed a very similar UFO right above a building in the same area. Could it be that Vlad was actually an alien? Like what if aliens need to feed off of humans to stay alive? And that's why Vlad did what he did. Cause in reality, he was an alien, not a vampire. I don't know man, this is all too weird. Mm -hmm. 